So this natural division of labor uh, had been going on since the hunter-gatherer period. The, the men went off and did the dangerous things and, you know, and, and hunted and so on. Uh, and, and women had, a, had a, a happiness and a solidarity that has been lost. Okay? This is what, what I'm trying to bring professional women's uh, attention to. Okay? The fact that the, their, the set, their sense of unhappiness in this new mechanism of the bourgeois workplace, right, that it's not, in, it's not entirely due to ma male sexism, it's because of the de dehumanization humanizing character of the modern uh, career system, which also victimizes men. Uh, and what, and what women are, are feeling uh, lonely. Okay? The nuclear family is, um, is a, you know, it's a, it's a cell. It's like a prison cell in certain ways. Most societies in the history of the world, uh, you have people living in the extended family unit. Okay? It's, it's a tribal family with uh, multiple generations living in the same house and shared labor okay? and, um, and companionship and so on. So this, this, where, where women are going home from the office, where they may have a very, very prestigious job, they go home and they're alone, okay, with, their, with, the, with the husband and with the children. And there's a lot of labor to be done. So there's a criticism of men: you must help more with the laundry, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. So the collaborative uh, group nature and the and the group happiness, okay, of the of the pre-industrial era has been complete, completely lost. So I, so I, what I say is that feminism needs to uh, stop being so, in, in, you know, uh, bl it, it really has has blinders on. It, it, it sees the present career system as if it had existed for thousands of years, and it has not. It's relatively new. We're still trying to adjust to it psychologically. There, you know, and, and, and the irony is that the more changes that you try to make in it to try to humanize it, the less productive it will be, the less efficient it will be. Okay? Mm -hmm. This mechanism was created in Northern Europe. It is a product, ultimately, of the Industrial Revolution that was based in England and then spread. You know, they, I mean, the, the Germans and the British, okay, essentially, they, they, their sensibility. Okay, is imprinted in the corporate structure of the modern modern workplace, and uh, and, and it's, it is perhaps by definition inhumane. Right? Um, so I, what I what I'm arguing for, okay, is that we have to return to uh, defining ourselves as separate from our jobs. I mean, we, that we have now we've seemed to have have glided into a period where where we are our jobs. That that is our ultimate identity. This seems to me very sad, very sad indeed. And this is not the vision of the 1960s of my college years. Say, where, where, where you had uh, young people turning their backs on the career system, going out, joining communes, baking bread, having, ch having children out of wedlock. And, and it was like a back to nature movement and seeing the ultimate realities, the ultimate meanings of the universe in nature. Okay? Now, I, I, that is my substitute for, for religion. I, I, I feel the energies of nature in, in a kind of mystical way. I, I, I have often said that I, I identify as transgender. Okay? There, there's absolutely no doubt that I, I, from the m m beginnings, I was born in the late 1940s and raised in the very conformist 1950s when sex roles were very polarized and a girl was a girl and a boy was a boy. And I did not identify with my gender. I, would, I, de I definitely uh, had a major dysfunction, okay, gender dysfunction. Um, but uh, I, I, I still believe that there are fundamentally two sexes that are biologically determined. There, there is a gray area in the middle. When I, I did my, um, I, I started writing on the subject of androgyny of blurring of the borderlines of male and female when I was in college. I was very drawn to the subject. I found it everywhere in Shakespeare's comedies, the transvestism of Rosalind, and as you like it, and so on. When I got to the Yale Graduate School, this was the subject of my dissertation. It, it was, you know, the original title of sexual persona. It was the categories of the androgyne, okay, which actually became the, the subtitle of my, of my dissertation. So I, I did research in the library. I went to the medical school okay, and did research into reproductive biology. And I learned about the, you know, this um, gray area between, between the genders. But it's a very small number okay, of cases, um, a minute number okay, of authentic um, genders which are ambiguous. I think that the transgender propagandists okay, make inf wildly inflated claims about the multiplicity of gender. Um, the, and the uh, sex reassignment surgery, even today, with all of its, all of its uh, you know, adva advances, um, cannot, in fact, change anyone's sex. Okay, you, you can you can define yourself as a trans man or a trans woman. It's some one of these new gradations along the scale. But ultimately, every single cell in the human body, the DNA in that cell remains coded for your biological birth. So there are a lot of lies being propagated at the present moment. Okay, which I th I think is not in anyone's best interest. Okay, uh, I would, now what I'm concerned about.
is um, is the uh, you know the, the, the popularity in the, in, in the availability of sex reassignment surgery. So it's someone who is feeling um, uh, not, doesn't feel uh, that the, that, they, that he or she belongs to the biological birth you know, gender. People are being encouraged to intervene in the process. Uh, parents are, in, are now encouraged to subject the child to procedures that I think are a form of child abuse. Uh, either you know the hormones uh, to to um, to slow puberty. Okay. Uh, actual you know, surgical uh, manipulations, etc. I, I, I think uh, that that this is wrong. That uh, people uh, should wait until they're uh, you know of an informed age of consent. Parents should not be doing this to to their to, to their children. And I and I you know I think that um, even in the teenage years is too soon to, to be making this leap. My study of history in, in sexual personae, um, I, I'm always talking about the late phases of culture. And this is I, I was very, always drawn to the late or decadent phase of culture. Oscar Wilde is one of the great exponents of that in the late 19th century. He's one of my, my strongest influences from my earliest years. And I found, OK, in my study, uh, that, that history is cyclic. And everywhere in the world, you find this pattern, OK, in ancient times, that as uh, a culture begins to decline, you have an efflorescence okay, of transgender phenomena. Mm. Okay? That is a symptom of cultural collapse. So rather than people singing the praises of, of hum, the human, humanitarian liberalism, okay, that allows all of these of, of these transgender possibilities, okay, to appear and to be encouraged, I would be concerned about what, what how Western culture is defining itself to the world, because in fact, this, these phenomena are inflaming uh, the irrational, indeed borderline psychotic opponents of Western culture in the form of ISIS and other you know, jihadists, etc. Okay, nothing more, you know, better defines the decadence of the West to the jihadists, okay, than our toleration of, hom of open homosexuality and this, and this transgender mania now, okay. Right. Um, so, I mean, I think that, um, you know, any vision of the future, the, the, the futurists from the, from the science fiction of the late uh, 19th century into the 20th century, usually they have projected that, that um, men and women in, you know, in, in, in distant space, okay, will start to conform to each other in gender. And you, you see that in, you know, you see it in Star Wars. Gender seems to start to be erased. Men and women are working side by side, almost as as as, as units in a, in a machine. There's something mechanical about it. This shaving away of gender differences. Okay. Yes. Um, uh, it, it, more and more, you know, the the masculine is seen as somehow retrograde, as something you know, the Paleolithic, something belonging to the past. However, I keep warning. Okay, that that um, uh, you know that the, the possibility of disaster of any kind, political disaster, war, famine, but but also climatic disturbances of a very severe kind, not global warming, which, whose, whose claims have been inflated.